Now we're going to hear the group play number two lead sheet rhythmic permutation together. Also notice at this point, all the horns are still playing in unison. Oh, in addition to this, I have to add, we're going to ask the rhythm section to change their beat a little bit. And at the very beginning, you'll notice it says two feel above the B flat major seven chord at letter A. So the bass and the drums are going to emphasize beats one and three of each bar until they get to bar nine. Then they'll swing four, four at letter B back to the two feel and at 25, they'll swing again. What this does by switching from the two feel to the four, four is creates a type of tension and release. You'll hear that, you'll feel that release and hear it when they actually start swinging uh, four, four in measure number nine and in measure 25. So here we go. Just Friends, number two lead sheet with rhythmic permutation. One, two, a one, two. in the sound immediately. All of a sudden the rhythmic, the rhythm of the melody has a certain vitality to it and it moves forward and it swings a lot more. If you look at download number three, entitled Lead Sheet Harmony and Counter Melody, we're going to take and move this to the next step now. We're going to take and eliminate some of the unison playing in the melody and add two important elements. First is a descending scalar counter melody which begins at letter A and takes the first four measures then it happens again at number measure number five and goes through measure number eight. If you look at the down stem notes there's a descending scale there. There is one leap in the second bar from the E natural to the B flat and that's in order to accommodate the melody dropping down to the D flat so that it's a third underneath the melody. Uh, in addition to that, you'll notice some of the notes have been harmonized as three-note chords. Uh, and for example, the pickup note, the A natural, is a F7 chord and has been harmonized with the E flat and the C underneath it. I've used the seventh and the fifth and chosen to eliminate the root from this chord. It's frequently done. The root is not always necessary and can be played by the keyboard player and the bass as well. Uh, so there are times when the root can be used, for example, in measure number eight, the fourth beat, the downbeat of beat four, it's a D flat seven chord, and you'll notice there's an A flat and a D flat and a B natural, sorry, an F, a D flat and a B natural, so we have the third, the root, and the seventh. Then on the end of beat four, there's an anticipation of the next chord, the G minor 7. So the F now is the 7th of G minor 7. You have the F, the D is the 5th, and the B flat is the 3rd. It's commonly done uh, in jazz music where we take the end of a chord, the last chord, and if there's no notes following it in the next measure, we use that as an anticipation. That way we get a resolution of the chord. Um, the unison lines have not been abandoned totally. If you look in measure 9 and measure 11, as well as measure 25 and 27, the unison is still present, as it is in measure 30. Uh, certain points, powerful rhythmic spots, are chosen to harmonize. So when you see the uh, pickup notes in the end of measure 4 on the end of 3, uh, measure 12 and 13, those are great spots because they have rhythmic power and they deserve to be harmonized at that point. 
At this point, let's listen to Just Friends, number three on the download, the lead sheet with the harmony and the counter melody. This is also using the rhythmic permutation, so we have all three of these elements coming together. I want two, I want two, three. <laughs> chance to hear all the elements so far put together the rhythmic permutation the rhythm section playing two and playing swinging four the use of three note chords the use of a counter melody and the use of the unison still intact let's move on to the next section this is download PDF number four and this is solo backgrounds we have the opportunity to provide a little extra accompaniment for the soloist as we um, put the backgrounds together, we want to keep in mind that it shouldn't be so busy as to compete with the soloist. It should accompany the soloist. In this case, if you look at letter A, I've chosen the starting note of the melody, A, and gone to the F and the D. So I'm using the notes from the B flat major seventh chord that's listed above. In uh, measure five, I do the same thing with a pickup to it in measure four, the G to the E to the C. So we're using the notes from the chord in a descending fashion. And there's a lot of space between the notes. This way they provide rhythmic pulse, but don't <coughs> compete with the soloist. In measure nine, as a counterbalance to those short punchy notes, we go to half notes and dotted half notes. Uh, notice in measure nine that the F uh, going to the E in measure 10 and the half note E in measure 11 going to the D in measure 12 are the, the main melody notes at that point in time. So I'm always keeping in mind the shape of the melody and the particular melody notes. I'm drawing all this material from the lead sheet itself, either from the chords or from the melodic material. Letter B is the same as letter A. And the second half of letter B, we see the same sequence of notes except that in 27 and 28 the melody is different, so therefore those two half notes, half note and dotted half note, are different. And then in 29, 30, and 31, we get a nice rising melodic line to counter all the descending melodic lines we've had earlier. So the backgrounds have a somewhat melodic character to them, although they're still simple and they stay out of the way of the soloist. Let's take a minute now and listen to the backgrounds that can be played behind a soloist. One, two, a one, two, three. Can be used freely behind any or all of the soloists as needed by the arranger or by the, the uh, performers themselves. 
even portions of the background can be used. So you could use the background on the second half of the form only or the first half of the form only. Um, this is the nice part about this is you can take and have a little bit of freedom in how you want to apply them. The important thing is, is that the backgrounds do not compete with the soloist, but they accompany the soloist and generally should be played at a lower volume level.